Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. On this big picture, I want to talk about saving money for Erie County. You know, we can do that by renewing our driver's licenses locally. We do that instead of sending money to Kathy Hochul in Albany. Um, an expert on that is Erie County Clerk Mickey Kearns. He's my guest on this big picture. Welcome to the show, Erie County Clerk Mickey Kearns. And first thing, give me a status report on the Erie County Clerk's Office. Well, we are the business office of Erie County, and we're also very, very busy. Uh, we just finished the year, uh, 2023, uh, in a positive cash flow. We've set records uh, with our dealer division. I'm, I'm very proud uh, of the entrepreneurial spirit of our office. Uh, our transactions from uh, auto bureau registrations are up 11,000. Uh, we're uh, setting records here at the Eastern Hills Mall. We added a Saturday uh, location time and uh, we've doubled the number of transactions. Uh, just a lot of positive things happening uh, in the office. Uh, we've also had some challenges, but we're working through them and I'm, I'm excited for 2024. Well, I mentioned this in my, in my open, and I want to emphasize this. When people re renew their licenses and, and, and do the paperwork here in Erie County at one of your offices, we in Erie County benefit from that because we get the, the money that would otherwise go to Albany. Well, and here's the good thing, Phil. Uh, because we do such a good job since I've been the Erie County clerk, uh, we worked out a deal with New York State where we're starting to get those green envelopes and we're processing them. So because of COVID and because of many other things, uh, we obviously have the commissioner, uh, Mark Schroeder, who's from South Buffalo, a former assembly member, former legislator. He's a pretty smart guy and he understands that we have a very well-run Erie County Clerk's Office. Uh, we've been able to process those green envelopes. But here's one thing I say to people, and they say, well, I can do it online. It's faster. If there is a mistake, you're still going to have to come into the office. So it's better for us to process that paperwork to help you through that. We'll get you in and out with an appointment. Uh, and even as you know, you walk by our location. Uh, we have flexible hours. We're open from seven o'clock in some of our facilities. Some of our facilities were open at six o'clock and we have two locations open up on Saturday. So we really uh, put a lot of time and effort into having a good customer experience. Uh, and those days, I always say, that's your grandfather's DMV or your grandmother's DMV. Uh, if you go there today, people are in shock about uh, how well our employees uh, greet them. Uh, we have security. Uh, and we get people through uh, the transaction, and it's a positive experience. Okay, so folks, here's, here's a simple choice. Who would you rather give your money to? Some lady that, you know, is questionable in Albany, or this well-spoken, handsome guy. Oh, my here, Lord. <laughs> here in western New York. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, simple choice. Uh, give, um, and it's helping Erie, it's helping the budget. You know, I tell people that during COVID, uh, the Erie County Clerk's Office had a $5 million surplus. We were the surplus of Erie County. We're, you know, the, predominantly the, the largest revenue producer for Erie County and, and, and many of our departments. So I'm very proud of that. We've got excellent, excellent staff. Now, we're going to get into the, uh, the DMV offices and, uh, you know, you do passport. Well, we're going to talk a lot about some of the services you do. But what I, I want to do, one of the first questions... I want to talk about services that the Erie County Clerk's Office does that people don't normally know about. Correct. People don't realize that the Erie County Clerk's Office is there for them to do this. Thank you, Vet Card. Uh, we have so many veterans in Erie County, and we want to say thank you for your service. Uh, and we store the DD-214 under the state constitution. We're the keeper of the records. So we store that in the clerk's office, the DD-214, the discharge paper. Uh, we have nearly 1,500 businesses that participate that give a discount. So Duff's, uh, our neighbor here at the Eastern Hills Mall, uh, they're part of the Thank of That program and many other businesses. You go in there, you get a discount. Uh, and people say thank you for your service. We have a Purple Heart program. Uh, 
Phil, unfortunately, during the Vietnam War, my father served in Korea during the Vietnam War. It was terrible how our veterans were treated when they came back. Uh, we thank our Purple Heart veterans. We work with the local chapter, Russ Ward. Uh, we're actually expanding services at the clerk's office. Uh, we're giving them their own space. But uh, you can be part of our Purple Heart uh, veterans book where we memorialize that person's name in a book that will be in the clerk's office in perpetuity past when I'm gone. I'm very proud of that. We were the first clerk's office in, uh, in, in New York State to do that, followed by Niagara County, who we work with. Uh, in addition to that, passports. Uh, you know, I, I said we set a record this year. Um, prior to me becoming the clerk, I looked my first year, we took in about 600 passports for the year. Uh, we did over 2,500 new passports this year. And you say, well, why is that important? We accept them, um, and then the State Department, our partner, we process them, nearly $150,000 in revenue. You know, we have a center uh, at the Southgate. We're expanding that to the North Towns, to here at the Eastern Hills Mall. Mall. Our new location will we'll have the opportunity where people can come in. We help them through the process, whether it's a renewal or a new passport. So those are some of the services uh, that we provide. And of course, we have our partners, our Zombie Property Initiative, uh, where we help uh, fight vacant and abandoned properties. We have a lot of uh, things, that what I call um, value added. Not part of my job, but we do these to enhance uh, the experience uh, for people in the community. And that's why I like being the clerk. That's why I like being in public service. We want to help people. Okay, so I want to touch on what you just said about passports. When people need a passport renewed, like my passport is expired, I bring a passport into the DMV office, and okay, my passport is expired. I need to bring in photos, right? Well, we'll do the photo there. So that's one of the benefits we have. So on a okay. renewal, um, we'll do the photo. Mm -hmm. We charge $10. Mm -hmm. But the, the value added is we check to make sure that all the paperwork is filled out correctly. Okay. That's very important because once you mail it, you go to the post office and you mail that. We'll even put everything together for you in the package. We have all the forms there. Once you mail it, if there's one thing wrong, um, it's gonna be sent back, it's gonna delay you. And Phil, what I wanna to emphasize to people is, uh, now that we're starting 2024, pull out those important documents, including your passport, and if you're thinking about traveling, uh, many countries require you to have a new passport, even if you have six months on that passport. So it's an important document, uh, but if you're going to Canada, um, you don't wanna leave that document hanging around, sitting in your car vehicle, um, if it gets stolen, there's a possibility for fraud. So uh, we want to help you through the passport process, and we've got a great partnership with the State Department. Okay, so you you fill out the paperwork first. You can get paperwork at any post office or at the DMV office. It would be at our outreach center at the uh -huh. Southgate. It's adjacent okay. to um, that's that's in the South Towns. We're going to be opening up a new facility once our construction is complete mm -hmm. here at the Eastern Hills Mall. We're mm -hmm. not open yet. Uh, we'll have to wait. But yeah, you can come in and even go down to 92 Franklin if you're downtown, mm -hmm. if you work downtown on your lunch hour. And we'll accept that. We'll accept okay. the paperwork. We'll take your picture. Uh, we'll make sure that the check is made out correctly. Um, you send that. And then and you leave it with you or then you mail can, it in. We can, you will eventually have to mail that in. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to take that to the post office mm -hmm. and they do that themselves just to make sure they receive that receipt and they have that. Okay, that's very good. That it's just a value added. You want them, It's just like going to the uh, uh, DMV. You want to make sure that you're prepared and you have the proper paperwork. We just double check it for people. Okay. And you mentioned going to Canada. Um, some people have a passport to enter Canada. I have an enhanced ID to yeah. go to Canada. The the en enhanced ID was uh, uh, like going to be mandated by a certain day, October of, of last year or yeah, whatever. Yeah, May 3rd of 2023. And that was changed. To 2025. Okay, so people still at some point are going to have to have an enhanced ID. Yep, in order to travel, um, obviously September 11th, a horrific day in our country's history where terrorists uh, took over a number of uh, airliners and crashed them into buildings. We lost so many people. 
it changed our country forever. So um, what I encourage people to do is to uh, not only get the passport, but if you have the enhanced driver's license, you'll need to show identification to get on an airline or uh, to cross over into Canada. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, a, it's an important identification to have. Uh, and we tell people you need original documentation because it is a federal ID. It'll be our the first- The enhanced ID. The enhanced is, ID is our- It's good nationally. Good nationally and to get on a plane. And what I say is, if you're gonna go to Canada, you may make that decision. You wanna to go to Niagara on the Lake. You wanna go up to uh, Toronto for a baseball game. You don't wanna be carrying your passport in your car. Mm -hmm. There's always a possibility that you can lose it um, and it could be fraudulently used. But if you have the enhanced driver's license, that will be accepted at the border. Uh, and you do have time, but you don't have much time. Because remember, you have 2024, time goes fast, and then uh, 2025. And we expect an, uh, an uptick as we get closer to that 2025 date. And, you know, one thing I tell people is that when they come in, you need original documentation, an original birth certificate. You need how many? Two, two pieces of documentation? Well, you need that. The birth certificate's the most important thing. You can bring the passport in as, as part of that. But that original birth certificate proves your name. So if you were uh, someone who was married, you have to bring in your marriage certificate for a name change. Mm -hmm. So you have to show the chain of the name. If you were divorced, you have to bring in your divorce decree. So if, when you're thinking about it, you can always call our, our outreach facilities at 858-8864 and just say, hey, listen, I have a couple questions. Or you could stop in without an appointment <laughs> and we'll help you through that process before you come into the DMV. And just to be sure, sure just to reiterate, an enhanced ID is good uh, anywhere in the country, and that means that if you're out in Seattle and you want to go into Vancouver, you can yep. use it there. Yep. If you're down in Los Angeles or San Diego and you want to go to, in, to Mexico, yep. I don't know why anybody would, but <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> yeah, it's good there. Yeah, it's the border cross, <laughs> and it's a federal ID, and I think it's a, I think it, it was it was a really positive thing. It was a good reaction to 9/11. Look, at, we, we, we all know what's going on in our country today, and, and having uh, a federal ID, I think, is a good idea. Okay. All right. Yes, that's definitely, because you don't want to be carrying your passport around needlessly, again, and, and you know, exposing it to loss or theft, and um, everybody has their driver's license, so it's a convenience. So, Phil, speaking of driver's license, uh, you know during COVID, people were able to self-certify, meaning because some people didn't feel comfortable coming into the DMV, uh, they were able to renew their driver's license. Well, New York State has put out a mandate that if you self-certified uh, and you didn't get your eye test, that you have to come in. And if you come to any of our locations and let them know that, hey, I self-certified, I didn't get an eye test during COVID, mm -hmm. I renewed my driver's license, uh, you have to get in and get that done or your driver's license will be suspended. Okay. They will suspend, and they're, they're being very, very strict about that. So they're giving everybody a little bit of time. They've been very flexible. But uh, if you come in, there's <laughs> no cost. We'll, we'll do your eye test for you. You don't have to go online. You don't have to use an outside provider. Um, even if you have an eye test from your current provider and they're part of the portal, uh, with New York State, we can accept that. But get in and get that done, because I would hate for people to be driving and they get they get pulled over and they get a ticket and, and they say, oh, I forgot to do that. Well, there's no excuse. You have to get that done. And we have flexible hours. Like I said, early morning, 7 o'clock in the morning at some of our locations. If you go to erie.gov slash clerk, auto bureau, the hours are all there. Okay. Um and I'm sure some people will be questioning, as I will be, how often you need to get your eye tested when you're re renewing your license. Mm -hmm. We're out of time on this segment. When we sure. come back, we're going to answer that question. Sure. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to The Big Picture. My guest is Erie County Clerk Mickey Kearns, and we're uh, about to get into an interesting subject. First question is, when you renew your uh, driver's license, and this was something I didn't know specifically. I, I, I knew that there were vision tests, but I wasn't sure 
that every time you renew every your time. license, you have to have your vision tested. Every time. We know as we get older in many instances. Tell me about it. <laughs> you know, 2020, uh, you know, driving with your corrective lenses is important. Uh, it, you know, I always say this to young people. Having a driver's license is a, a, an important responsibility. Um, a vehicle, a, a 2,500 or, or, you know, some instances now they make trucks at 6,000 pounds. Uh, you, could, you can get in some serious problems. And for those people like me over the age of 150, um, and the things get a little fuzzy. Right. What is your vision required to be before you are required to have corrective lenses? What, what is, sure. is acceptable? Sure. We come in and, like I said, we have the eye charts uh, right there. Uh, and people come in and uh, they have to get to a, a certain standard. And when they meet that standard, uh, usually in many instances, uh, you know, 20, 30 people come in, they read the lines. Most people, you know, if they, they, they're going there and they're starting to squint <laughs> and they're like, do you have corrective lenses? People, uh, you know, if you don't have corrective lenses, uh, you could get in some situations where you get pulled over and you have glasses on and you may need to amend that license. So uh, we're not looking, uh, we want people to be, have, have the ability to drive, but we want people to have the ability to drive safely. And getting that eye test, as I said earlier, uh, if you certify that you are going to get that, and people's visions change as they get older, uh, it's an important part of driving, especially driving at night. You know, I'm a big proponent of, uh, you know, many of our senior citizens uh, having that ability to drive. Uh, they want to go to church, and they may only drive two or three times a week, but they want that independence. And I support that 100%. Now, I want to get back to one other question here. We talked about the enhanced ID and a real ID, and those are two different things. I thought maybe they were the same thing, but they're not. So an enhanced ID is actually a level above the real ID. Correct. Explain the difference. Sure. To, to simplify it, uh, you have to be a United States citizen to, to be enhanced ID, hence the original birth certificate. Uh, so it, it's, it's a higher standard, uh, and as I said, you know, uh, the real ID uh, might be for people who are here lawfully and legally. Um, the best example is maybe a doctor um, is here on a contract for a certain period of time, maybe a professor, uh, maybe a researcher. So there's many different professions uh, uh, that I know uh, people come to this United States. They don't want to become citizens, but you know if they're contributing to the economy here, uh, they have that right and they can get a license. Well, that opens up a little bit of a confusing question, and that is, you know, there were there are a lot of immigrants that were were in New York City mm -hmm. who were here illegally, but mm -hmm. now they're in the country. And some of those immigrants were were uh, in Western New York. They're put up in hotels. They're still here, sixty or seventy, it, it, to my knowledge, and is the number. And they're still here. Um, those people who are not here legally, they cannot get a driver's license legally, is that correct? So you have to have the proper documentation. Um, and you know, New York State has lowered the standard under the green light law. Uh, it's something I didn't support. I was very public about it. You know, a, a driver's license, uh, I say to young people all the time, um, it's a privilege. It's not a right. Uh, but New York State, the legislature changed that. And as long as you have certain documentation, asylum seekers can get uh, some type of documentation. Uh, in the end, uh, they're working through their process. I know it's a lengthy process, a year and a half, two years in many instances. Uh, but uh, as long as they have that status and they have the proper documentation, uh, they can get some type of identification. So if those people who fall under that category, where they've come in illegally, but now they're in this country and they're basically being housed and fed and, and taken care of, that's one classification of quote unquote illegal mm -hmm. um, residents. Um, and, that, and then and we, in, during the break, we were talking about uh, an immigrant who's come here to work for a certain period of time, mm -hmm. say on a farm, you mm -hmm. know, downstate, and uh, he's going to go back to his country in four or five months. Mm -hmm. He's here to earn some, uh, some income and quite legally. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's not 
going to get a license because there's no interim uh, license that's available to him mm -hmm. under the circumstances. It's a little confusing. It, it, it's very confusing. And, and, and here's the thing. You know, we have an issue with um, immigration in this country. You know, at the federal level, uh, you know, every two years when there's uh, an election, it gets kicked down to the next thing. Instead of our federal representatives sitting down, getting this issue worked out, we all know that our farmers need workers. Uh, in many instances, they're temporary workers. Mm -hmm. Even in, in the local growing economy, you think of a Wagmans or a Tops and local farmers, they want to support local businesses. So they need local temporary workers. Farmers can't afford to hire people full time. It's seasonal work, right? In many instances, when I was talking to those farmers, they are required to drive and handle equipment and uh, with technology. So um, New York State issued a, a green light license uh, they really watered down the driver's license in New York State. Um, I went to court against that with many of our, our, our clicks because uh, when you come in, you have to have the proper documentation. Uh, we didn't have standing, uh, but uh, it's still an issue, and I think it's going to be an issue going forward that uh, we have a presidential election this year, uh, congressional elections. Immigration's a big deal. And, you know, they talk about the three rails of politics. I think it's becoming the fourth rail of what are we going to do uh, if people are going to be here to work, if, if they're going to be documented, if they're going to be in asylum. You know, it shouldn't be three years if they declare uh, asylum status. So we've got some great organizations that work with people. Um, we need, we're the, we're the country of immigrants, right? Uh, you know, when we receive the Statue of Liberty, I know my parents, uh, you know, my relatives, came from Ireland, and I went back. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's two types of uh, immigration. There's legal immigration, and there's illegal immigration. And what you see on the southern border, uh, people violating the law, I feel so bad for people who do it right. The county clerk's office, we work with many of the agencies uh, and the people that work so hard to become US citizens. We go to their ceremonies, and we wanna say thank you, congratulations. Job well done. You followed the rules. So um, it, it's, it's really a contentious issue that needs to be resolved at the federal level. And our congressional people have to do their job and get it resolved because it's impacting our economy. You know, you take uh, uh, polls from people who say that, uh, you know, we should allow these people in on the southern border because they're just here to, you know, have a better life and take care of their families and so on. And national polls, um, sometimes as many as 30 percent of the people say that, yeah, it's a good thing. We let these people in. And, and I wonder sometimes, you know, who those 30 percent are and how they think through the process of letting people unfettered into the country. There's something like 8 million people have come in at latest count in the last two or three years, um, and they're, they're, they haven't been documented, and we and they haven't been vetted, right? And and so we really don't know who these people are. They they've just walked through the southern border. Now, if you're a humanitarian and you say yes, these people want a better life, they they're trying to do this for their children, etc. That's justifying it in in a good way. But picture yourself at the Erie County Clerk's Office or in line at a McDonald's or in any, any situation where there's a crowd and people have to wait in line. And then picture yourself looking at a bunch of people cutting in front and cutting off the line so that the people who've been waiting for right. 15, 20 minutes to get served, suddenly people cut in front and they just walk in the place and they're taking over. You know, you would, even the people who are sympathetic to the people coming in at the border, I don't think that 30% who are sympathetic would tolerate actions like that in, in a, if you put it into the proper perspective. So here, let's, let's talk about this. It's real simple. So we talked about the real ID and why we have the enhanced driver's license. We were attacked on September 11th. We have wars raging all over the world. People do not like our democracy. And when you're talking about 
uh, immigration, and this is what I mean. It's a federal issue. This is a federal issue that we should be holding our federal officials uh, to a higher standard. And I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, conservative, independent. What are you, those 435 men and women that get uh, elected to represent us, they got to do something. We're going to have a new president. And as you said, this is a different time. You know, when you're talking about people coming in, we want to be, uh, we want to show uh, humanitarian towards people, but there are borders and there are consequences, especially with terrorism today. Yeah, I, it's, it's a very confusing and a very uh, chaotic situation. We could do a whole show on this. Oh, I know, and, and we will at some point. I mean, it, it's just, it is a show by itself. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time for this show, but it's always a good conversation when I, I have know, you in here. And we get off great. on, you know, different subjects away from the clerk's office. On, but it's, it's informative. Uh, we've covered a good amount about IDs and passports and in the clerk's office. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, I appreciate you watching the big picture and watching WVBZ TV. Um, unfortunately, it goes by very quickly, folks. Uh, we'll see you next time on the big picture. Thanks for watching WVBZ TV.